Walking in what I thought would be a normal school day turned into murmurs and whispers as soon as classes settled in. I saw kids running to each other to share the latest news. Students were on their phones talking about the latest tweets and texts from their friends at other schools. As most students continue on with their day, more and more students were now being included within the whispers and group messages that read, What is going on? What is happening? Just get up and go. This is what my peers understood that will help our schools get funding. Students walked down the hallway in unison, out the same doorway, and down onto Market Street. Street, and when we got there, we were in a crowd of thousands of other public school students who were witness, who were um, also having their budgets cut. Philadelphia is the fifth largest city in our great nation and the largest in Pennsylvania. It has 131,362 students enrolled in its public schools. Once Governor Corbett took office in 2011, our schools in Pennsylvania have been cut by $1 billion statewide, while corporations and energy industry gets tax breaks. In 2001, the states became in charge of the Philadelphia school system. The school board's job was supposed to fix the problem in our school system, but things took a turn for the worse. Our elected leaders are not coming up with a solution to ensure that our schools are a priority and gives us, the students, the resources that we need. So what does this mean for me and my peers? Maybe that a student has experienced a death in the family and they need someone to talk to. Someone might have a college essay and they need it proofread. Um, there could be a student who's gay and they're coming out and they're not supported by their family and they need someone at school to talk to. So basically whatever a student, whatever's going on, when a student walks into my office and there's something that they need, I'm there to help them with whatever it is. I think counselors play a really big role, again, when you're willing to do whatever needs to be done and step in. Um, you know, you never know what someone does until they're not there. And again, we'll never know. Maybe there's a student who's depressed about something and wishes that they could go talk to a counselor, but now if they're, if they're at, you know, Masterman and there's one counselor and 1,200 students and the counselor's so busy with the eighth graders doing high school selection and the seniors doing college applications and dealing with crisis situations, maybe that student will see how busy the counselor is and not even come in for help. According to the American School Counselor Association, counselors help all students in areas of academic achievement, personal and social development, and career development, ensuring today's students will become productive, well-adjusted adults of tomorrow. Research shows that school counselors are effective in improving academic achievement, preventing school violence, reducing bullying, preventing student suicides, preventing students from dropping out. How can students navigate their lives without counselors? I'm the first one in my family to go to college. My parents are immigrants from Vietnam and they sacrificed their lives so my siblings and I would have a better chance at a good education and a better life. They never had a chance to pursue their education because they needed to take care of us. I didn't know how I could go through my senior year without a counselor. In the late fall, the federal government gave the state of Pennsylvania a one-time loan forgiveness of $45 million. A ratio of 1,200 to 1 counselor is unacceptable. It just doesn't work. You're only going to be, you know, uh, reactive as opposed to proactive. And so I think they need to understand that we need more counselors, not just the ones that were laid off, but even more so that we have a workable ratio so that every student is able to know their counselor and the counselor is able to know the student uh, from ninth grade through 12th grade. And while the budget nightmare continued into my senior year, I came to better understand how dire the counseling situation was across Philadelphia schools. Up until December 2013, Philadelphia Public School students experienced the following. 
16 counselors assigned to 48,000 students. Minimal to no assistance given in the elementary and middle school students in the high school application process. Late college application submissions and missing counselors letters of recommendation. Schools not offering the PSAT, the test that prepares students for the SATs. Almost no individual attention given to students to tend to their needs. Why are we less valued by our elected officials than our fellow students in the neighboring suburbs? And apparently, things can get worse next school year. There's still a budget deficit that can lead to more cuts in our already dangerously unfunded schools. Bill Green, the head of SRC, said in the most recent school board meeting that what are we doing to the schools is immoral, it is wrong. Most recently, the school board refused to adopt what has been called Doomsday Budget 2 because it would mean laying off more teachers and counselors, reduce the number of school nurses, bringing classroom sizes to 41 students, and no money for basic supplies. Our school would continue to be an empty shell. I survived our senior year. Just as imagined, it was tough trying to figure out my life plan after high school and I'm on my way to college. Having the people who knows me around me made all the difference in the world, but I was lucky to have my teachers, advisors, and counselors intact. My school is one of the few schools that I didn't lose staff or resources as others did. Our school's community spent a lot of time and energy fundraising to make this happen, but again, I just got lucky. But shall we just hope for luck? We can take a stand on making education our priority and demand that our schools be properly funded. Doing nothing should not be an option. We need great schools to ensure that Philadelphia remains a great city. We need our voices to be heard. We are real people with ideas, opinions, and lives that matter.